Uh, this is a video that will show uh, basically how we prepare a kidney biopsy sample for light uh, immunofluorescence and electron microscopy. First, why we even bother to do all these studies? Uh, clinical syndromes of glomerular disease uh, are limited, as you see here. Um, and uh, there are a number of diseases in each of these categories. Um, and to really figure out what is going on in every uh, individual patient, you would have to do a kidney biopsy and perform light electron and immunofluorescence um, microscopy studies. Uh, so uh, some of these diseases would be overlooked without immunofluorescence and electron microscopy. Uh, a bunch of the position diseases commonly happen in the kidney. It's just uh, such environment, uh, very uh, uh, kind of like prone to uh, immune complex deposition, but also paraprotein deposition diseases and so on. Uh, so to really figure them out, you need to have immunofluorescence studies. Um, electron microscopy. Uh, is great for ultrastructure and substructure, and uh, uh, you can see some of the uh, uh, details of the glomerular basal membrane and diseases that can affect it. Um, you can't really do that by light microscopy, uh, but also some deposits may have fibrillary, immunotactoid, or other substructural detail, and you can view that by electron microscopy. Uh, we need to have uh, these different studies done uh, in a way that uh, the tissue actually, when we obtain from a, from a patient, we need to write then at that time, we need to split it and send it to different labs. Uh, so we, we send small piece uh, to electron microscopy lab, a small piece to immunofluorescence lab, and the rest of the stuff goes into um, a light microscopy, so we send it off to main histology lab. Uh, so uh, the tissues will end up in different vials and different uh, fixatives or transport media. Um, uh, so, for example, here you see that uh, Michelle's or Zeus uh, transport medium is used for immunofluorescence studies. Uh, we really don't fix tissue for uh, immunofluorescence studies, but uh, uh, it's it's actually um, snap frozen and then cut and then stained um, for. Uh, uh, electron microscopy, we use uh, glutaraldehyde, which is really a superb fixative, uh, but it uh, fixes tissue very slowly, so this is why it's perfect for ultrastructural viewing of really small samples, like we do in electron microscopy, uh, but it's really uh, not very uh, convenient for light microscopy because of that slow fixation, and we use uh, formalin uh, which is actually a great fixative, and uh, it's great for uh, light microscopy um, uh, uh, viewing. So um, eventually all these studies are performed, and um, let me show you how light microscopy is done. So uh, formalin fixed tissue gets wrapped in a tissue paper, put in a tissue bag, and then all of that is put into cassette. Uh, and then um, uh, this is... Um, Sent into uh, sent to uh, processors, um, and uh, after the processing, uh, the tissue is handled by a technician, uh, which um, uh, they actually embed tissue into paraffin, and then eventually the paraffin block will be uh, created, and it would look like this. So on the reverse of the cassette. Um, so this is a processor. So everything's now is done automatically. Um, uh, or actually most of it, but we still need technicians that will uh, embed into paraffin and uh, cut sections. Um, and um, eventually, when they create these uh, paraffin blocks, uh, they will be um, um, cut and uh, stained for different stains, but also the blocks will be um, uh, filed, and as you can imagine, in a place like uh, uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital, where we get uh, 60,000 samples a year, you may easily end up with uh, more than 200,000 blocks per year, and the filing is really very important. I know people usually don't think about these things, but, but it's, it's very important to um, uh, imagine even, you know, like how, how this whole process is done. Um, 
So uh, for kidney pathology, we use different stains uh, because they give us different information. So as you cut sections, you can stain them with H and E, P, S, trichrome silver. Um, and um, for example, P, S and silver stain based on membrane stains, and it will give you a better sense of architecture. Uh, trichrome is a stain that we use for uh, collagen, and uh, it can give give us a better sense of how much chronic damage and fibrosis and sclerosis you see uh, in the tissue. Here you also see a section uh, stain with H and E. This is a section of the tissue that went for immunofluorescence, and we can also stain uh, tissue that went for electron microscopy uh, just to view it before we actually stick it in the uh, electron microscope. Uh, we, we can put it on glass slide and uh, stain it with toluid in blue. Um, because it's not embedded in paraffin, it's embedded in, in a very hard plastic, it stains best with uh, toluid in blue. Uh, this is, for example, how the same glomerulus would look like by H&E and PES. You see that it looks very different. Um, H&E points out the cellular component. Uh, this is a stain that we use in general pathology for everything. This is the, the bottom line stain in, in general pathology. But for the for kidney and kidney pathology, we use a lot uh, PES and silver stain because um, it really gives us a better sense of architecture, as you can see here. Uh, immunofluorescence sample, as I said, doesn't get fixed, but it gets snap frozen. Um, this machine is uh, called a cryostat. It looks actually really like a um, um, uh, machine that you would see in the uh, main histology lab for cut and paraffin sections, but the difference is that uh, the, the whole machine is here uh, surrounded by a fridge. So um, inside of this machine, you can um, cut the, the sections because they're uh, cool uh, in the uh, and refrigerator uh, refrigerated in in this uh, machine um, so the piece of tissue is now immersed in a, a, a liquid that freezes easily and uh, once it's frozen uh, the block the frozen block can be placed on the stage uh, the whole thing again is refrigerated but uh, this is how uh, section looks like even in um, a main histology lab when you have paraffin uh, sections. Uh, this stage can be actually advanced and moved uh, to, to cut against this blade that you see here. And uh, as you can see, that the stage is now actually down, and uh, you cut a little section, and as you actually put a glass slide over it, um, it will uh, melt that section, and uh, the section will then look like this. You can actually see here a little piece of tissue. Now you can stain this with IgG or IgA or IgM and so on. So one section uh, per stain and uh, you end up with a bunch of different stains. So in different labs, different routine stains are used, but this is what we use in our uh, lab or actually in most of the labs. Uh, this is what, what's been used. Uh, electron microscopy can be transmission or scanning. Uh, transmission electron microscopy is the one that we use routinely, so you cut a very ultra-thin section and then you transmit uh, uh, electron microscopy beam through it, and uh, this is how you would um, see the structures. In scanning electron microscopy, you scan the surface and you have more of that um, three-dimensional view as opposed to two-dimensional by transmission electron microscopy. We don't use scanning electron microscopy um, routinely. Uh, tissue is processed differently, differently for electron microscopy, mainly because you have to actually really embed it in a different material because um, it has to really sustain the electron beam uh, and paraffin would melt. So uh, we use a very hard plastic and uh, that material also has to be such that it would not distort the section. So these black dots here are pieces of tissue and then uh, you pour that uh, liquid plastic and then it solidifies and it looks like a bullet like here. Uh, these are uh, different um, blocks for different uh, electron microscopy samples. And then you can uh, also, this is a stage, and you put that um, um, uh, bullet, plastic bullet here 
and then you cut similar to what you saw for immunofluorescence or uh, even for paraffin, uh, the principle is the same. You advance this stage and it cuts against the knife. The knife is diamond knife because it has to cut this hard plastic. It's very expensive uh, knife. Um, so um, these little sections are actually uh, sections for electron microscopy and you can pick them up by glass slide and then stain with toluid in blue and look at that by light microscopy or you can pick them up on a grid um, that looks like this. It's a tiny little grid and this is what will go into electron microscopy uh, or electron microscope and um, uh, you can um, uh, transmit light through that uh, in transmission electron microscopy. Um, so you put this grid into a holder that looks like this and then you put the holder, you shove it into the electron mic microscope like right there and then you can view sections of different tissues and look at different structures. So for example, this is a, a viral structure over here. Um, so this is what we use for um, um, kidney uh, biopsy uh, processing from uh, light microscopy, uh, immunofluorescence, and uh, uh, electron microscopy. So thank you so much for watching this video.